The COVID-19 pandemic made it difficult for buffets to survive, but that's not the only reason some of these all-you-can-eat establishments closed their doors. Soup Plantation opened its first location in San Diego in 1978. Under the corporate umbrella of Garden Fresh Restaurants, the unique self-serve concept would expand to include another, nearly identical buffet restaurant, Sweet Tomatoes. Both offered customers all-you-can-eat plates and bowls, most with a nod to, or emphasis on, healthier eating. Soup Plantation. <laughs> Is it good? Are you kidding? All-you-can-eat salad, soup, pasta? Its iconic feature and selling point was a 50-foot long salad bar. By 2020, Garden Fresh operated nearly 100 soup plantation and sweet tomatoes buffet restaurants all across the United States. Buffets were one of the first businesses to close down during the early pandemic quarantine in March 2020. Two months after the lockdowns began, Garden Fresh realized that because of how it operated, it wouldn't be able to survive the pandemic, regardless of how long it lasted or how soon restrictions were lifted. In May 2020, the parent company of Soup Plantation and Sweet Tomatoes announced that it would file for bankruptcy protection. With that move, 97 restaurants closed, and 4,400 people were suddenly out of work. Devoted fans of this buffet will rejoice in the fact that in 2023, it was announced that the Sweet Tomatoes Tucson, Arizona location may see a reopening. Only time will tell. When the first Sizzler opened in Culver City, California in 1958, it represented a new way of dining out. It combined the fair and sit-down experience of a steakhouse with a meandering, widely varied self-service area the restaurant called a buffet court. As Sizzler developed and grew into a national chain, the buffet grew as well. Patrons could order unlimited access to that signature bit of restaurant real estate, which included an overstuffed salad bar as well as multiple soups, a make-your-own taco station, and a Sunday bar. For a few bucks more, they could go with kitchen-ordered dishes like a fish and chips basket or a steak and baked potato dinner. Sizzler had a hard time staying relevant and attractive as the casual dining scene it helped to create and popularize became overcrowded with competitors who could offer better steak options and more interesting or less expensive buffets. Once a chain of several hundred outlets, Sizzler closed down 136 locations in 1996 and dismissed 4,600 employees. Already absent from some markets entirely, including the entire Midwest, Sizzler filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in September of 2020. By that point, Sizzler had a little more than 100 locations left. As of 2023, there are only around 80 remaining, the majority of which stand in Sizzler's birth state of California. In an attempt to move away from drive through or take-home options, Wendy's invited customers to come inside and stay a while with the introduction of the Super Bar in 1988. Jumping on and expanding upon the salad bar trend of the 1980s, the Super Bar was a sizable all-you-can-eat serve-yourself buffet broken down into three distinct and well-stocked areas. Pasta Pasta offered two types of noodles and two Italian-inspired sauces. Mexican Fiesta allowed customers to make their own loaded tacos. Garden Spot included a salad bar and desserts. Patrons could return to the Super Bar to load up another plate as much as they wished and at a low price to boot, about $4 for adults and $3 for kids. Oddly and ironically, the Super Bar was so successful that Wendy's had to get rid of it. Although primarily stocked with inexpensive foods like pasta, beans, and lettuce, Wendy's couldn't make much money on the Super Bar, especially when labor was factored in. It not only starts fresh every day, but we keep it fresh all day. You replace all this all day? Mm-hmm. In 1998, Wendy's began to do away with the pasta and taco stations, and then slowly phased out the salad bar, eliminating it entirely by 2006. It was never widely heralded, so the number of participating locations at its peak is difficult to determine. But at one point in time, many Popeye's Louisiana kitchen outlets across the United States operated full-service buffets. They offered all of the most popular and famous menu items sold by the Cajun-inspired poultry forward chain. For one price, which was not much more than that of a combo meal, customers could select and consume as much as they liked from a hot bar. It featured spicy bone-in fried chicken, less fiery regular chicken, biscuits, french fries, red beans and rice, rice dressing, macaroni and cheese, and mashed potatoes and gravy. Some Popeye stores even set out big metal pans of cheap-to-produce items not normally found on the regular menu, including tacos and spaghetti. In 2010, just three buffets remained in the nationwide Popeyes network, with stores in Huntsville, Alabama, Panama City, Florida, and Lafayette, Louisiana.
Just seven years later, only the Lafayette location still had the all-you-can-eat self-serve buffet at a per-person cost of $10. The pandemic would ultimately spell the end of the last Popeye's buffet. After a management change, virus reduction concerns, and the removal of an outdoor banner advertising all-you-can-eat chicken, the Lafayette buffet went cold in late 2021. By the early 21st century, a number of buffet chains were all operated by the same parent corporation. After some mergers and realignments, Fresh Acquisitions LLC and Buffets LLC consolidated and controlled the buffet scene, operating five separate buffet brands – Ryan's, Old Country Buffet, Hometown Buffet, Furs, and Fire Mountain. In 2021, that umbrella corporation filed for bankruptcy, which sped up the demise of all five of its buffet chains. When the initial COVID-19 restrictions were scaled back, after having lost multiple months of crucial revenue, buffet companies found they didn't have enough money to operate. Among the brands that faded out in 2021 was Furs, which operated as an inexpensive cafeteria-style restaurant, where customers picked plated food on display. The end came less than a year after an attempted rebranding as the more upscale Furs Ace Marketplace. Another of these brands, which was significantly reduced in a 2012 Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing, was Ryan's, a no-frills buffet operation with dozens of well-attended locations. Overall, the company closed 16% of all of its restaurants to help account for $245 million of debt, including 81 Ryan's outlets. At the time of a 2016 bankruptcy filing, another 166 closed within a month. The post-pandemic bankruptcy filing at fresh acquisitions and buffets eliminated what remained. Other casualties of the bankruptcy were Old Country Buffet and Hometown Buffet.